friends. So this is the sad start of an 1860s dress bodice. I started it at the beginning of this year, um, intending to wear it to events this summer, but when they were all canceled, I decided to set it aside for a while um, because my body was pretty rapidly changing still after giving birth to my daughter. And without any events to wear it to, I didn't want to finish it just to have to go back and alter it later to fit my new body size. So I stuffed it in my UFO drawer and promptly forgot about it. I decided to pick it back up again because my group is slowly starting to reintroduce events and my body is evening out. So I will have an excuse to wear it. And they have planned a picnic for tomorrow evening. <laughs> um, I think it's really ambitious to try and finish it before then, but I'm gonna try. Real quick before we get more into things, this is my first 1860s dress. So very much like this corset, it's intended more as a wearable mock-up than anything actually representative of something that would be historically made. And because of this, my finishing techniques are not going to be 100% historically accurate. The goal of the garment is to appear superficially historically accurate based on the shapes and the styling. So to begin, I did a bit of research and I'm definitely not an expert. So I did begin by using this pattern for the basic shapes. I know the big three aren't the greatest for historical accuracy. So I did make some changes to accommodate for that for my design ideas and to fit my body. In the front, I'm changing the darts to gathers. Also, if you noticed during the first clip, um, it is missing a sleeve and there are a ton of pins on the other. I need to raise this shoulder seam quite a bit. Even with the dropped shoulder that was appropriate then, the simplicity pattern called for one that was way too low for my body and I, just, I couldn't even move in it. And on the subject of the sleeves, I had originally drafted uh, more of a bishop style, but now that I am raising the shoulder, they're going to be too short and originally the pattern called for coat sleeves. So first I marked the line where I'd put pins indicating where to raise the shoulder and sleeve seam to. Then I opened the seam of the sleeve still remaining attached to the bodice and cut the length off, taking care that both sides were even and that I left a seam allowance. and I matched this on the other side. I carefully marked the changes on my pattern so I would remember to use them the next time. So I traced the original sleeve pattern I had drafted and added length to accommodate the raised arm side. So I thought to myself, it's okay. I don't need to mark where the fold goes on the pattern. I'm a decently talented seamstress. I know what a sleeve pattern looks like, and I drafted this one myself. I would never do something silly like cut my sleeve backwards. Y'all, this is one of the more embarrassing things I've done in a while. So then I went back and marked the fold on my pattern. and recut my new sleeves. So I have the new sleeve set in and this is really exciting. I was able to reuse the piping I had made the first time I attempted the bodice. So I did not have to spend time doing that all over again. So now we are in my bathroom because it's nighttime and the lighting is better in here and this is a voiceover because the baby is asleep and I don't want to tempt fate.
but this is the progress and what it looks like now. Then I cut the waistband and the skirt panels. Say hi to my pajamas. Then I sewed the panels together and I did not know I make a face while sewing until just now editing this. It is the next morning. I'm still bumming in my pajamas and I'm gonna sew some hook and eyes. You may have seen in the beginning, I had originally had this closing with snap tape. Um, I don't know why I thought that was gonna work. I sewed the hooks on first to the bias tape and then folded it over, pinned it, and used the buttons to catch and hold the bias binding down. It's not the most secure, but it works for now, and when I have more time, I will go back and fix it. I sewed the buttonholes on the cuffs by machine because I am both lazy and perpetually short on time. Then I sewed on my cute little buttons I had ordered from the Button Baron. Hello. So it is actually day number three right now. I finished the skirt yesterday and set it into the waistband. Um, so now this needs to be set onto the bodice. Um, I did a lot of hand sewing yesterday um, at the picnic because there was some scheduling miscommunications. And so we're actually having a second picnic today. Um, so I decided not to kill myself to finish it yesterday since I would be able to wear it today. For the waistband here, I have the skirt portion offset from where the bodice is so that you can just hook this on and get into your side here. Right now this is being held with only one hook so I do need to go back later and add some more secure fastening so that it doesn't pull like that. I was inspired by an extant garment I saw at Kent State University's museum. Um, it really has nothing in common with this dress other than the fact that it has the same kind of zigzag motif and in that one, the waistband here is cut at the cross grain from the rest of the dress. So it adds a little visual interest and I really liked that. So that is what I went ahead and did here. And I did the same to the cuffs. I thought it could possibly be helpful to someone also making this pattern to see how my new pattern pieces were different than the original pattern. Um, and you can see here where the original owner made an extension, but I just ignored that. According to the pattern packet, I should be a size 20, which is what this is currently cut to. Um, but as you can see, I did end up taking in quite a bit. So I would not say it is exactly true to size, but that also did help when I was creating the gathers in the front to have some fullness there. So this is the current form of the zigzag dress. I am incredibly pleased with how it turned out and I'll feel much more confident next time when I go to cut this pattern out of a nicer material. However, I do really like this dress. So when I have time, I think I'll take off the skirt and gather it by hand and then add piping to the waistband to give it a more historically appropriate look. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed this mishmash of a video and seeing my hectic process, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye friends!